Taylor told us that we need to do like something for Easter, like an Easter egg hunt or something. It is. It is. What do you mean? No, he wants us to do like some something fun and engaging with our audience. So he says like an Easter for egg. Easter? Yeah, he wants to do some sort of an Easter egg hunt. I love Oh. I'm just gonna I say we just let him run it and be in control of it because I, I Well, I, how are they gonna get what do you mean Easter egg hunt? I, that's, that yeah, I try to wrap my brain around it. I just don't have and he's just like, No, don't you get it? And he's trying to explain oh, it to me. I'm like, Oh, he said oh, he's saying the Instagram page. Yeah, yeah. That's what he said. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna to go to So the, there's gonna be Oh, so you know what Easter eggs are? Did you guys know this? Yeah, you did. I'm sure you did. I'm the fucking guy that never knows the shit. Easter eggs are like little hidden things on movies and video games, right? Yeah, uh-huh. isn't that what that oh, is? Oh, yeah, that's what they call. It, yeah, and like, there's whole channels like devoted to finding these little Easter eggs that you go back and you're like, oh wow, like the director or you know whoever put like all this imagery in the background so nobody would pick up on. Here's it. a fun fact: uh, Fight Club. You guys watch? You guys like Fight Club? Yeah, love do, it. Do you know that there's a lot of scenes where there's a flash of yeah. uh, what's his name, Brad Pitt, mm-hmm. that character he plays? Yeah, just flashes like very. So when very, you go back, you start to when you go back, it. you see it, and you're like, and you like, you look back and like, oh fuck, there he is. It's like Memento. Yeah, yeah that was another movie that's that I a great, got for me. Yeah. Okay, so what's so what's so what's going on though? There's gonna be Easter egg hunt on our Instagram page. Yeah, so I, he's going to do a on Mind Pump Media. So if you go to the Instagram Mind Pump Media, mm-hmm. every day he said he's going to do like a um, he's going to have two eggs, I guess, and he's going to do give away stuff. So people, but they have to see it on the story in order to get it. So I don't so know how the, he's going to. It's the Instagram story. Yeah, yeah, the so video you, one. Yeah, so you have to. You, and it's every day new new eggs, or is it all on one day? No, every day he said he's going to do two different eggs. And he's going to surprise us and mm. uh, them, obviously everybody, with what is going to be in the Easter egg. And, and there's going to be he's going to give away something like it's, he's all just and he doesn't want to tell us because he he says it'll be more natural for us to do it with him if he just says, "Listen, just trust me, we're going to give away some cool stuff." You know, it's funny. Like I'm getting excited. I, <laughs> right. I want nobody. Like, I'm, saying, what's this mother- I'm not even. What's this yeah. motherfucker like, doing? That's what I want to Like, ooh, ooh. is he going to give away? It's chocolate? so exciting. Chocolate. So every day leading up to Easter, what is it? Easter day. He, I guess most obviously Easter most day? people will. Yeah, <laughs> Easter, Easter, Easter day, <laughs> Easter Sunday. Most Today people, most Easter people will be with their family. So he said, starting on Thursday. So when this episode goes live, because this goes live th- today, right? Yeah. Thursday. Okay. So today, today. So it should be there now, right? So should mm-hmm. we go there now? This is so funny because we're saying it before, right? So today, if you go <laughs> on to the Instagram Mind Pump Media page, follow that page, and then watch the Insta story. The Insta story. A lot of people don't know this. All you gotta do is click on the up the icon on the top uh, left. Yeah. And you'll see like a short video. I just learned how to use it the other day. <laughs> He's I'm, so good. I'm yeah. so advanced. Yeah. So happy Easter. Job, and uh, happy hunting for the Easter eggs. Look forward to I'll be on there watching too. Hopefully, uh, if he's smart because he works for us, he'll actually give me something too. So, uh, otherwise, hand job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wonder how he's going to give that yeah. an Easter egg. He didn't, he didn't like that comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor guy. gives hand. Taylor gets thrown in the mix. Hey, let's. Uh, we don't give a fuck. Uh, T Dog. We love you. No, Happy you can't. <laughs> no, do you can't use that on air. Justin, oh, you just, immortalized them. Justin and I agreed. Man, Maybe if you're lucky, you can. You can. You know what? With our that. mind pump mafia. The, they'll be able to come up with a better nickname. I'm. I'm pretty certain. <laughs> T <of it>. Dog. <laughs> Remember, because I mean, Doug. He was. Do you know that backpack? Was a, the funny, he was the spinner. Uh, what else we got? The, yeah, the walking terrorist. He was, the, he was chimp. Yeah, uh, spinner. Many and things. The, the, the funny, the funny part was that you and I were making yeah, angry fun of. Chimp. We were making fun of Sal for calling him such a terrible name. <laughs> yeah, and that's gonna turn around and backfire so on poor funny. T dog, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's, I was just like, gonna, dude, that's still gonna imagine be- your boy, you know, like you're you're way going to, to a wedding. Way to like, ninja your best that man. one, bro. Hey, yo, T dog, last. Can he tell us a little bit about Adam? Man, uh, go way back. T-Dog. We go, we go oh, way yeah. back. Uh, My friend, we're T-Dog. boys. You know, like, are you sure like, you've known him for a while? Because yeah. that sounds like, like a your generic. mom didn't call you that. Sal said this to Taylor over the weekend. Some clever guy when we went to L. A. and Justin and I instantly bursted out laughing. I and couldn't we, help. I laughed we like were, three we were hours making straight. Fun of, oh, we did. Yeah. Justin did all these great fucking oh, rants afterwards to making fun of Sal for n- even giving someone a terrible nickname like that. <laughs> and then he keeps saying it. So now he's like, you know what? We're going to make it that. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah like it's is- stuck. Poor Taylor oh, is gonna man. have to suffer through this awful nickname that's yeah. that's how <laughs> came up it's with. So it's so old. It's like like on a Seinfeld yeah. episode. So something. make sure that's who will actually be giving you guys Easter eggs. So make sure to thank T Dog guys. Yeah, thank yeah. T Dog. Hey, yeah, big ups to T Dog. So Mind Pump Media, yeah. they go on yeah, the man. video part, right? The My homie T Dog, and look for the Easter eggs. Happy Easter! If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. 
Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. It's a good. It's a good. Hey, Dude, you know what's what? crazy right now? What's crazy right now? Well, it's not right now. Oh. But it's just crazy. Today, well, it's no, no, there's no time. It has to be it. crazy though. You Wednesday. can't say that word. This is why. This is weird, right? Unless so it's, today's is. Wednesday. When do we fly back into town? When do we get back into town? Sunday. Yeah. Sunday, right? Yeah. What? Where so, are we? When we were, we were we were in L.A. Justin, remember? I steal. I I still. <laughs> I steal. I steal. Everybody, God, everybody. Get, you know what? I'm getting worse. The more people who make fun of me. I guess Steve. About well, uh, we're gonna hold, no, we're gonna talk about that subject. Steel, like, but I want you like to finish. S-T-E-A-L. I want you to finish your thought. Fuck. Can you finish your Listen. Can you finish your thought? Just stole your clothes. <laughs> Stop. Keep going, <laughs> and then we'll move on to something else. I still feel a little violated from Sunday, man. What do you mean? Whoa. The TSA dude. That was. Oh. That was. Oh. That was different for me. Dude, yeah, he was grabbing hog. Dude, and balls. he was. He was. I mean, it's. Well, I t- so I had this conversation. I mean, with- that's what you told me. So you know what's, you we, know what- we joked about it you- on Sunday. We laughed about it. We moved on from it. I had a, I had a. Remember what I told you guys that you know anytime I have this state change, right? Whether it be funny, whether it be nervous, whether it be excited, you examine. I examine, right? So. Um, yeah, you got to start. You got to tell a story. Yeah. yeah so yeah, okay. Yeah. So what happens at TSA? We have it on film too. Which is so great. we filmed the whole thing. Okay. Yes. So yeah, you assholes. You already posted a lot of. Oh, it's, it's a so good, good thing Justin was the one carrying the drugs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo. In my butt. So on the on the way out, where do we just fly? L A. So we just we just flew down to L A. Um, which and- by the way, L A. Beautiful, beautiful place. <laughs> But what a shithole. Anyway, continue. Uh, I'm it's sorry. It's a beautiful house. Dude, oh, well, come that's on. true. And then we visited uh, some friends. Don't, uh, don't be a hater. The aerial house was fucking amazing, by yeah. the way. But just don't, the, don't just the LA traffic and yeah. stuff. We just want to punch on. Anyway, I'm sorry, Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, you just hella people mad at you right now. Come on, hell of pride. I like the people. There's a lot of pride, dude. There's a lot of pride there. Good. LA, man. Just so listen. So, Dodge around, man. So it's we, the Dodgers, we, baby. We fly down there. I lose my fucking ID. Uh, and so I happen to have you my- You left it at the strip club the night before. <laughs> yeah, that's, what I that's right. Duh. Oh. So way to go, Dick. How about to talk about that one now? So yeah. I, um, I, I lose the- on the bar stool. I lose my ID. We're on our way back. That's not a true story. Okay, we didn't leave the strip club. I didn't right, right, strip club. But I, Come I, on, I, I bro. You ruined the joke right when you do that. Damn it. <laughs> Everybody knows we don't. When we do gotta that. start explaining ourselves, so then, yeah, uh, we didn't. I didn't actually have drugs in my butt. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's start covering ourselves. It was a dildo. Yeah, come on. Continue. I thank you. Lose the ID at the airport, right? And we're we're flying back now. And I luckily I still have um, my old ID and my gambling card. Which, by the way, you're you're very. Very, very adorable <laughs> and cherub like <laughs> in your picture of your old ID. You look like, you little, so innocent he looks like those though. little baby angels that they, yeah. you know, that they, they, the cherubs. Do you have puka so, shells? Uh, no, I didn't have oh, okay. Come I, on, bro. I feel like it was almost Come on that it level. Wasn't, it wasn't yeah, a high school. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's got I mean, like the we're... bugle boy shirt. Come you know, on, dude. He's got the, the... That's kind of what I said. Puka shells. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Puka shells. Come on, I'm going to come at you a little bit. I haven't worn puka Mine's shells even worse, like bro. six or seven Oh, grade. yeah, you guys uh, saw mine, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm like making this, sh- like I just shit face. You know. <laughs> so because I had the old ID, I'm going to try and like play it off like I don't know that I haven't lost it. I just want to go real quick and hope they don't say anything. She just just confirms my name with my, my, uh, my, fl- my ticket, right? And... Uh, she goes. Well, you made it through the first time. I did, and then I, it's right before. It's the last time they have to look at my ID, and they go, "Oh, did you know this is expired?" Uh, and I go, "Yeah, I lost my ID on the way on the way over." And they're like, "Oh, go ahead and step to the side right here, <laughs> uh, Jerry, code seven four three nine er." And I'm like, "Ah, oh, Jesus." So I'm, I stand aside, and, she's like, and, and actually, I, I just stood there waiting, and she's like, oh, it's going to be a minute. And I'm like, oh, great. So I had to step aside, and I'm like, oh, awesome. It's going to take forever to do this. Jerry comes up. Jerry says to me, what's the problem? They they, they joke about my it's laughing. Hansy Jerry. Yeah, they, they joke about me leaving, l- losing my ID and that my only other ID is a gambling card, and so they have their fun, right? And they say, okay, <laughs> follow me, right? And so I follow this guy, and, and he's taking me through – and uh, they're all like, as he's going by, like, oh, we got a code 974, you know, oh, we got a code 974. Like he's telling everybody's going by. And I'm like, there's like a code for it. Yeah, there's a code for it. Right. And, you know, we get it. We get he gets over to this guy. Right. And this guy's uh, stacking the bends and he goes, hey, Mike, could you uh, go over here and do the code 497 with, you know, this guy? Here? So you said three different codes. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, don't so. I don't know what it was. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. For story reasons, I'm going to just keep throwing code numbers. 669. <laughs> yeah. So he uh 
He goes, oh, uh, I'm I'm doing Ben's right now, you know, and like you tell he doesn't want like, to. Nobody wants to do. Yeah, this. nobody wants to do it. And and then the guy's like, like kind of looking around. And I'm standing there like I, this is awkward. Like, can we just get over this? Like, just pat Make me down. Make Johnson so can go. do it. I'm pretty sure if you're a hot chick, I'll, so, I'll do it. I'm gonna hey. show up. So listen. So the guy I'm goes. I'm already rubber gloved. The guy goes, um, you know, well, I'm supposed to go to that shift in five minutes. So if you can't find anybody else, I'll do it. You know. So the guy's like, yeah, well, can I just have you do it? I can't find anybody else. So he takes me over. And he stands in front of me, and then he has this long old spiel. Like it reminds me of, um, like when the like your uh, with the rights when your cop the cop reads the uh, rights. Oh. Miranda rights. Yeah, your yeah. Miranda rights, right? So when he reads your Miranda rights, he goes through this like long old thing. So he's like going through this long old like, hey, I'm gonna do this, that, blah, blah, blah. Are you okay? And then he stops. Are you okay with that? I'm gonna do this. this. Are you okay with that? And I'm like, dude, just fucking pat me down. Like I don't have a bomb. I don't have anything. Like let let's get out of here. Let's do this. I'm not being annoyed. I'm actually being playful with him. I'm laughing. We're joking. You guys were you guys were there, right? I was just yeah, kind of teasing him. Like, there. Yeah. yeah, you know, I asked him afterwards if I needed to give him my phone number and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. so I was having fun with the situation. But to be completely honest, I one, I never had that before. I was always under the impression that when these moms that went crazy on the news and all these people that uh, had these that kid this huge kid. uproar, I thought it was the one that Doug gets always, you know, Doug always gets pulled over, right? Because something he goes through, his thing goes through the sensor, yeah. they see his vest that looks like a bomb, and they always have to... it's got a bunch of the, the yeah, stuff have a bunch of scanners over his So crotch. they pull him to the yeah. side, they pat him down, and then he gets his stuff, right? Well, this is different. This is they actually. I didn't know this. I was I was always assuming this is that, extremely well, this invasive. Was, this is what I thought the original what the original pat down was, and I never really saw anybody do this. So I always thought like, God, some of these people are kind of overreacting. Like, come on, like it's their job to pat you down. Give these poor kids a break. They, that's what they have to do. It's for our own safety, you guys. Don't. For, why does everyone have to make a big ordeal? But they're always just they're seeking attention. That was my way of thinking. I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. Until. I got this. And I say I got this. Like, I feel like I got something right now. I feel like... <laughs> it's like it's he, a lasting uh, impression in your mind. It was so fucking invasive, dude. It was crazy. Like, he literally takes his... And I know he takes the back of his hand, but he outlines my entire pecker and balls. Like, <laughs> like I can feel him go over the vein. You know, like, he actually, like... Whoa. And, <laughs> it, and he, The vein. Yeah. The vein. You know, he you know he takes the main one. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, took a horizontal one. pass four times, and yeah. then he took a vertical pass so you're getting like a partial Whoa. hand job. Yes. And Vertical so and horizontal. there's this uncomfortable feeling that this partially feels good. And this is also really <laughs> yeah. weird that this is happening to me publicly in front of a bunch of people. He just lined you. <laughs> and then he has to go. He has to go all the way up on both sides to the point where he asked me to take my belt loops, hold your belt loops. So I had to give myself a wedgie. So he tells me to give myself a wedgie, basically. Right. So I lift my pants all the way up. So they're now I get, see that mammal now I, have toe. A, I got a camel toe yeah. going on. Right. So it's just my junk's all pressed it's a moose up. Knuckle. Camel toes yeah. for a girl. Whatever. You know. What I mean, yeah. I said right? mammal. So I'm I'm wedging the fuck out of mammal myself, too. and he goes and does the whole process again. So like through this, like it's multiple times. Now you know why. When, wow. When that now you know. Imagine now you're a parent. Holy and shit! They're doing that to your kids. Yes, hundred percent. I would get arrested. I feel yeah. guilty. I would go to jail. Yeah. I, this was a, a definitely a, a self reflection for me on the 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 thoughts I had on those people that I thought were seeking attention over this because I was just unaware. I was unaware that they actually go to that level. And I thought, if this was if this was my girl, yeah. forget my five year old he, daughter. He straight up hog wrestled you. My five five year old daughter, I'm labeled to knock a motherfucker out, yeah. you know. But I mean, yeah. even my girl, I'd be like uncomfortable watching her get touched like that, that aggressively, Dude, right in front it's, of me. It's a hot topic. Uh, it's been a hot topic for a while because it's like everybody's like, oh, it's for our safety. But you got to be careful with that. It's for our safety, you know, thing. Like when the NSA fucking wiretaps. Everyone, without a, a, a you know, without a, a, a warrant, without a due process, they just wiretap anybody and everybody, whoever they want. And people are like, well, I have nothing to hide. You you better be careful when you give up your liberties, when you give up your freedoms, because those uh, at some point can be used against you. Yeah, and then uh, how are you going to get them back? That that once you that don't, box is opened up, it's you don't you get later. It back. You don't get it back. Yeah, that's why there has to be like a protective mentality. These are these, you. yeah, you got to be very careful. And are these things actually making us safer? This is this is an important debate we need to have. I'm not going to debate that now, one way or the other. But you got to ask yourself that. And then lastly, like uh, you know, t if terrorists hated us for our freedom, well, they fucking won. Yeah, like they're right. winning. We're losing our freedoms. It's all eroding. The time. Yeah, it's starting to happen. You know what I mean? Now you get in a plane like. 
uh, you know, Adam feels like a like he's like he's being violated, and that's Adam. I mean, Adam's super comfortable with himself. He's a big dude. He doesn't feel threatened. Like, yeah, right. we t- and that's what tripped me out. What yeah. tripped me out was that you know like we you were can handle something. We like were that. joking. We yeah. were videoing. You it. looked like uncomfortable, like as yeah. you're looking over, like oh my god, no, like serious. Yeah, and like, like I, re- <laughs> I remember being like we're yeah. we're having fun with this whole situation, but then being like, whoa, dude, like this is a little much. This is a little more than I'm comfortable with, and think and but mostly because of what went through my head right away like you said which was imagine that being your daughter because then i wouldn't know how to react because you brought this up and i thought it was an excellent point like so you that's happening to your daughter and as a father do you pretend like you don't care do you pretend like it doesn't bother you so that sends a message to your young daughter that another man or woman that is a stranger is touching me like this and my dad and my mom don't say anything or do anything or then do you react all crazy and then now your daughter and, and freaking son, out don't know traumatized? The, yeah traumatized like holy fuck like how do you react yeah, in that situation and to make it healthy i think i don't know like, what i would whoa do. that blew my mind i don't know what i would do man i i feel like I would lose my shit. Like I feel like I wouldn't be able to control what I would do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I then you can't that, be you can't be mad at the guy who's doing his job either, right? Because this you is know what, what he's me, told Can I tell you something right now? All the horrible shit that's ever happened in fucking society of all for all of humanity. <laughs> for all the time, it's someone doing their fucking job. Yeah, exactly. It's not the order taker. Yeah. The order take I'm sorry, the order giver. Yeah, you the order, always have a choice. The order giver is a fucking evil motherfucker too. But I'm t- I'm gonna tell you something. Right. Hitler did not kill himself millions of, of 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 Jews it was a lot of people just doing their fucking job so here's what I, here's a little message i like to send people don't do your fucking job if it's fucked up yeah just don't do it quit like be like be strong with that you know what i'm saying or like strike strike as as a whole you know, like, 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 demand change. It's just, it's just crazy. Don't, don't, don't play that. Yeah, that, this that's whole, always just, a victim oh, thing. Oh, I'm just like, doing my job. Well, in their, in their defense, okay, in their defense, they, I mean, maybe they don't feel bad. Exactly, about Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In their, in their defense, either one, they don't feel bad about. It. Two, that maybe they never even thought to like really put themselves on the other side like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, right? Yeah. They're just doing their job. Of course. Like, of there's course. many jobs that I've had that I'm passionate about. I love doing, but then I don't. I'm not thinking of yeah. all the repercussions. And I, I mean, we're using, that. and we're using, you know, an example that's like they're not hurting, they're not killing you. They may be violating people. I get that, and yeah. I'm sure some of them say, "I don't want to do that." You know, I'm not going to do that. But you know, they do. They there's a very famous study that they've done. And that they've replicated where they'll have test subjects go into a room and they and have shock shock a person. Yeah, yeah. So there'll be a person in another this. room and they'll answer questions. And if they get a wrong question, then the person, the test subject will push a button that'll shock the other person. Now they don't know that it's fake, that they're not shocking the other person. But they see them like getting hurt. They see them or they hear them or they hear it, getting yeah. hurt. And they're informed that each shock gets stronger and stronger. Mm-hmm. And the and it starts off with the person just going, ow. And then eventually it's like the person like, no, please don't, ah, you know, really freaking out. And this test subject is told what to do by the scientist who's like, okay, go ahead and push the shock button or whatever. And an alarming percentage of people won't do it I anymore. Feel like- no, well, no, alarming percentage will do it. Will do it. Oh, yeah. knowing a still. Smaller, yeah, they'll do it. A smaller percent, actually a minority of people wow. will say, it no, is fuck a very that. small. And I, I, like I can tell I'm hurting him. I don't, yeah, I I don't want to hurt do, that. I don't want to do this test. I, I seriously could draw a line in the sand and be like, that's two different types of people in the world that exist. You know, people that think outside and pull themselves out of the process and the, I have to do this to do it this way. And there has to be a formula. People have to like this, this, this sort of like construct is there for a reason. And we all have to conform and you know, it's, it's conform or it's like, wait a minute. Like what has anybody thought about like what this entails and like, like really examine the process of it or do you just fall in line well, and not question well, anything? Dude, look at what happened on United airlines. Did you guys see that? Yeah. No, you guys were saying that. This so morning. What, what happened? Oh, so God. they over, they oversold a flight. So there's too many people, but there's people, these people already bought. Which How's that even possible? That's possible. I, first of all, it's just, horrible business on the like 10th level like this is just shit business like united could go should go fuck themselves yeah they overbooked a flight everybody got on the plane yeah. so the f- plane is full but now they don't have seats for their own employees it was like three people or something right yeah they, they had, had to get, to get three get employees of- on that they so they're like okay we need to make room so first they offer hey you know this flight was yeah we'll sold. give you double the- we'll give you 400 dollars plus a hotel room yeah. no, nobody responds like 800 we'll give you 800 dollars yeah. Then a bunch of people respond, or a couple of people, but there's one there's one seat that they need, and nobody else wants to get off the plane. Yeah. So they, this is no bullshit. They randomly select a passenger, mm-hmm. randomly, and they pick this guy, and they're like, "You got to get off the plane." And it was a doctor, 
and he's like, I have patients waiting for me he's in like, so I and so have place to stay on. He's like, I'm not getting off the plane. Now that doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Uh, that that definitely adds another twist to it. But yeah. I don't care if the guy's just fucking going home. Like he bought the ticket, you put him on the plane. Go fuck yourself. You guys made a big mistake. Yeah, 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 yeah Your yeah. mistake, not his. So, Bro, so this guy doesn't want to get off, doesn't want to get up. They right. call the cops. Oh, shit. Police go on the plane and yeah, physically police. physically assault this motherfucker. Like, yeah. Drag gets, him on like, his face. Like, basically rip him out of his chair. And what? Passengers are screaming. Like, you guys are hurting him. Stop. Like, they're, st- they're screaming at the cops. Yeah. The cops, who are just doing their job, rip this dude off the plane. He's got a bloody lip and they literally rip this mother... Like, like he's just on his back and they rip him off the plane. Didn't he like run back in too? Well, like, no. I, he, I he think I think afterwards they let him back on the plane. Oh, they let him back on. Which just goes like, what the fuck are you guys yeah. thinking? Yeah. Just left... You should have just left so him You there. understand that that was wrong. Yeah. You know, like, but I would like to say uh, I'm very happily that United, United Airlines today lost, I think, $1.4 billion Whoa. In, sh- in share value Whoa. Ouch, because of that incident. The market responded. There, there you go, motherfucker. Take, 1.4? Take that one. Yeah, 1.4 billion dollars. Holy shit. In market share. Yeah. yeah that's because, what happens. Or dude. In, in, in share value, excuse me, because people just started dumping their stock uh, left and right. Didn't they have something happen to them like like 10 years ago? What happened uh, to them when we were in our. Uh, I don't know. They're, they've got a really bad reputation. They were one of, the, one of the first ones that went down or one of the. They had the most in one year or some crazy shit. Like they I, were, don't, I don't I don't remember. Don't, they yeah, had I don't want to talk shit. But yeah. yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. I, I don't remember either, but I, I thought United was another plane, uh, one of the. Uh, uh, companies that had a hard time. I just, I, I just think was like, American? Like, if, I don't know if it was American, like I'm a United. business owner, right? I've been a business owner for a long time. If that was me and that was my plane and I was stuck in a really bad situation, I would fucking say, look, I need a volunteer. I'll give you $5,000. Like I would eat it. Yeah, exactly. I would eat that shit. Or you if know, I'm somebody- on the plane, I'm going to get up and be like, I realize this guy's situation. You know, I would designate myself. Yeah. Like, like nobody stood up. Yeah. Like don't rip him off the plane. Yeah, I'll leave. Like, yeah. like whoa! Like, I would like jump out. Like, whoa! Like, you guys yeah. are hurting that guy. I just yeah. don't understand. Yeah, but. I don't know, man. It's, I don't know. But yeah, again, like this just happened. This say. happened when? When did this happen? Uh, just it just went viral like yesterday, I think. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. That's right. I didn't think about that. There is there's people on YouTube, right? So people. People were filming it on their phones, and it went fucking nuts. Oh, you have to put you have to put it in the show notes, Doug. You just put a put a. I'm serious. Like I want to see it. I haven't seen yeah. this yet. If there was there was it's disturbing, dude. Is it really it, that it, bad? It, well, it's just, just fucking stupid. Like, yeah, what are you guys doing, like, man? Get pissed off. I can understand ripping someone off is like being like. Well, now there's violent. the other question you're talking about, like standing up. How many people stood up to make sure they got it on YouTube, and how many they people actually stood filming. up? Right? Yeah. There's like, a lot of people filming. Like, oh, I bet, it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, just being passive about the whole thing. Right? Yeah. No, like, there's a lot of people filming. So, uh, you could, Which, now, hey, by hey, the way. Hey, dive into that right there. There's people that were yelling, though, and like, yeah. Yeah, there were. Well, so. dive into that, though, for a second. Like, you feel so compelled to to film when it's like, God, if you felt so compelled to help this guy out, like, wouldn't it be just easier you know what, to though? volunteer yourself? You know what, though? Let's think about that for a second. It helps how much, more. Exactly. Yeah. Well, because they the, documented dude, it. Dude, you know how they say the pen is mightier than the sword? Yeah. That's the modern equivalent of the pen. It's a valid You take a picture or a video is the most effective. This is what you can do. If you ever see some shit going on, uh, going on that's fucked up and you don't want to get involved because you're afraid of getting hurt or you don't want to yourself yeah, get, just videotape that shit, post it, post and let it, it go right viral. Yeah. That shit changes things very quickly. It does. Yeah. So whoever took videos of that shit, Congratulations. It's a great check you. on authority like Good that. Didn't they, sure. aren't they, aren't they going to do uh, the cops wearing the, the glasses? Hadn't they already implemented that like in LA or something? Oh, the like that? body cams? Yeah, the body cams where there's uh, a camera I, I on the like 24 I know some police departments are doing it. It, it. it also, hey, by the way, it also protects the cops. Yeah. Don't yeah. Get me wrong. There's a lot of, you know how many times cops deal with, probably most of the time, deal with assholes who lie. And say, oh, he was being, you know, you know, uh, uh, excessively, you know, excessive force or whatever. And it's reality. That's the it's the purpose. Well, so that's the shitty part. So when I talk to my buddies that are cops, they'll tell you that that's more often than the other oh, side. I, I would bet it's I would very bet rare. On, the guy who gets dragged off and it's crazy. Like that's a one off. And you know that every cops all over the all cops all over the country right now cringe because they're like, great. Now you make us look like this one guy makes us all look this way. This is just you're just making an uphill battle for us. We They're starting had, to fire back. They're yeah. starting to fire back because you're seeing more cops, uh, police departments video, have these cameras, and they're starting to release these films. Like, look what this perp yeah. did to this cop, right. and look and 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 look how this cop helped this person. It's just going to be a. It's it's good. I like this. It's like a war of you know whatever. Let's 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 see. Well, all it's a stuff. war of transparency. Yeah, yeah. Let's that's all, I mean, which I think we're all for. I you mean, gotta I th- check both ends. This is what we talked to Tom Billu <laughs> off air when we were when he came by the house was in the throat and this yeah. whole the future the of everybody's business will be like those that the, are the most transparent. Like transparency is going to be huge, and so many people 
are afraid of that because in marketing, it's all about tricking you, manipulating. And so that's how we've made money for so long. But those ways are changing oh, now. Like good. to the point, even where we talked to like Taylor, right? And when he advises us, there's certain things that we're like, oh, it'd be, we should shoot it nicer. He's like, you know what? Honestly, it's not worth the time that it would take for you guys to create this. I mean, people will just appreciate the realism of just shooting that clip the way it is and everything because transparency is king right now. And mm -hmm. a lot of people are afraid to do that, but we'll have to do that I in love the future. It. Yeah. I love it. Do bring you later. Bring, on the bird. Bring, bring the freedom bird. Freedom bird. Step right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Mm. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. Kyle Cletus, does asymmetrical soreness indicate asymmetrical recruitment patterns? That's a good. That's a good question. Ooh. I don't know. Next question. That, yeah, yeah. Well, Imagine if we did that, we're like, good I don't know. Question. That would be a good place to start looking for sure. It's, yeah. it's got to be a great sign, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're especially if you're doing both sides of your body in an exercise. And one side is consistently displaying signs of uh, inflammation and muscle damage, and the other side isn't. Then yes, I would say there's probably, or there's a high likelihood that there's some kind of an asymmetrical recruitment pattern. Like I have, like an example. Yeah, I was just be, gonna say, give please. Uh, I mean, we didn't even have to use asymmetrical there. I think that's what someone wrote on there. But I mean, it's simplify that so the average listener understands what they're well, asking. This happened to me when I was a kid. Um, I, used to, I used to I had a scooter. Scooters were kind of big when we were kids, but they didn't have the Razor scooters. Remember they had the big tires and you yeah. fucking jump those things? Oh, yeah. And I thought I was so rad. Which I thought were still way cooler <laughs> yeah. than those little ones. I was like 19. Could do so much more I'm just kidding. Those. I was younger. So anyway, I'd ride the scooter and I was always right foot on the scooter. Left foot was the one that I would push off. And uh, which meant my left calf got lots of work uh, from doing this. And I'd ride this thing all around all the time. And I'll never forget, uh, right around that time, I thought it would be a great idea to start jumping rope, probably because I watched Rocky. And <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told. Uh, uh, and I started jumping rope, and my right calf got sore as fuck, and my left was fine. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, like, why is that happening? And then I'm like, oh, oh it's the scooter. It's because oh. I ride on my left side, with my left side, or I push off. Did you put that together as a kid? I did. I was... Uh, Jeez, you I are was, a nerd. I think I was 14. That's, yeah, I wouldn't have put that together that early. Really? No, definitely not. My awareness of my body and understanding <laughs> mechanics like that at that age, What's fuck. this? It's boner. Yeah, no, it would have just... Yeah. It would have confused me like probably 90% of the people. So where I see it most common, though are like compound movements or because that's where it gets really challenging oh, yeah, right there's all kinds of joints yeah there. and so then it's like so for example let's let's just take something a little less complicated but a little bit more complicated than what sal's saying is like a, a lat pull down right so you do a lat pull down and you feel your soreness all on the left side but not the right side so you think oh i have an imbalance or a recruitment pattern in my lat well it could be stemming from the shoulder or the arm, you know, mm -hmm. somewhere else, somewhere else in the kinetic chain yeah. besides just a lot. So it's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not a hundred percent accurate. Like, Oh, I have this bad recruitment pattern. You might be able to activate the lats pretty well, but what's happening, there's some sort of dysfunction in the shoulder or somewhere else. That what's good is it'll, it'll kind of lead you down the path of like really assessing your day to day habits right. and like, yeah, like your pattern. So once you can kind of, uh, really pay attention to that not just what you do in your workouts but like all day long like how many times am i using my right hand to to pick things up to to move forward which foot am i stepping with predominantly or if i go to to jump which foot do i place in front of the other or you know all these things uh think about you know chronically how long you know of a period like years of doing these same types of movements would contribute to now a quote unquote balanced sort of a a, a situation mm -hmm. where i'm trying to dis yeah i had i had a client who couldn't she couldn't feel one side of i don't know i think it was her left glute like we would do exercises and glutes was one of her targets. Oh, that's really common. And she would, she'd like, I can feel my right glute firing, but I can't feel my left glute firing. You know what movement uh, <clears throat> points that right out for people? Which one? You know the one that we did where we band resisted their quad? 
And then you have to you you thrust and you your thrust your hips forward, you thrust yeah. your hips oh, forward yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you slide into the runner stretch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's that's I use that to to do help really? help people connect if they have because that's a very common. Yeah, did thing. we do Engagement a YouTube video on that? We did, we did, we did a YouTube video oh, which good. we could also put in the uh, in, the, sh- in the show notes. Yeah, and we can actually link directly to that. But that's right there is a great uh, example of something that's very very common. And I'm, I don't know why your lady is. I'm sure I'll let you finish your story in a minute. But I wanted to make sure I shared that with everybody that that we made uh, and I and I remember that that was a tool that I used a lot that helped people realize that there is an imbalance there because you can really tell like when you go to thrust with that it's pretty glaring oh it's very glaring you can you can when you're when you're focusing and isolating one side with and being band restricted and you have to engage the glue like one will like feel very natural like you'll just get right even me I have I still have it even being focused on it like because it's really we always like kick our hip to the side or when you drive you're uh-huh. you're very rarely squared up you're kind of shifted so well another way to see that too is if you if you uh, uh, use like a bike and and you get off the seat and if you constantly like are sitting and you'll you'll notice like the seat will tilt to one direction mm-hmm. and uh, you just see like where you're uh, really striking the hardest too, right? that way it's interesting well so with this client that I had what I did was I was trying to I couldn't figure it out because everything looked good. Mm. Her squats look good, lunges look good, even her toe touches look good. <clears throat> Hip thrust, like I was like, what the fuck? Why doesn't she feel this glue? I'm thinking, is her nerve damage? And I'm going all these different ways. And then I had her take her shoes off, and I noticed that. So was, let's say it was her left glute. Her left big toe would come off the floor a little bit when she would squat, and uh, boom, right there, I could see that there was some. There was a there was a change in the recruitment pattern in that whole kinetic chain that she was feeling in her glute. So then I had her ground her right toe into the floor while maintaining good ankle stability mm. and start doing toe touches with that. And little by little by little, we were able to gain some connection to that glute. But, you know, Justin made a comment about how long it takes to change these patterns. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, man, uh, there's just no exaggeration. Like, I'm I'm doing it. I'm still doing it. I, it's, yeah. o- it's only been... It's been about eight months, maybe seven or eight months for me now where I have not lifted with a belt or with squat shoes. And I still will not go as heavy as I know I can go on my exercises because on certain exercises like my deadlifts because the second I go a little heavier, I can lift the weight. It's no problem. But boom, there goes my imba- there goes my old recruitment pattern. Kicks right back in. Yep. So I got to back off. It's hardwired. You're, it's, you're fighting against hardwired, and you're trying to reprogram that. It takes a long time. It takes a while. And so like now I'm doing double overhand hook grip. I'm not wearing a belt when I'm deadlifting. I'm watching my feet. And I don't go above. I don't think I've gone heavier than – I think 450 was the heaviest I've gone recently. I've gone up to 500, but boom, there's my imbalances. 450, I was okay at. I don't even like going above 400 pounds. This is some, I mean, I'm somebody who was deadlifting in the mid fives. And it's just, it's like you have to like learn the exercise all over again. Yeah. It's fu- it can be very frustrating. But I will say uh, a positive on that is not only have I not lost muscle, so it's not like I've lost muscle or performance. I've actually, my body's changing a little bit. And I'm kind of building. Uh, a little bit better, it seems. And if I'm, you did, though, I think it's okay. Which is fine. Yeah, yeah and I think that's where, like, I mean, I, this is where I struggled. I remember I had a hard time taking care of the things that I needed to take care of with my body and imbalances because I was so driven to build muscle and I was so driven by my insecurities of not having enough muscle that if I actually put all this focus on something that wasn't related to building muscle or as much as uh, you know, fixing the imbalances that, oh, I would lose all this and it would be like, oh, the hardest thing ever to get back. And it, that's just not true. I mean, you can, it's really easy once you've uh, built that muscle to get back to that point. What's hard is breaking through new levels or points, right? In your, in your growth or your progression and strength and muscle size, especially when you start to hit the edges of your limits of your genetics. So right? let's give Kyle a takeaway. So this is what you should do. Um, I would do two things. A, I would use dumbbells. And I would go uh, light enough to where you can match both sides yeah. exactly. I mean everything. Match both sides from the ground all the way up from the position of your foot up to your ankle, your hip, your low back, your scapula, your shoulders, your wrists, your elbows, everything. Pay attention to all that stuff. Mm. Have to be perfect on both sides. Use dumbbells. Do the same thing with barbells. And go as heavy as you can, you can until – or at least use as much weight up until the point where form breaks. you start to see one side is a little bit different. And I mean everything. Like 
I noticed I have. I think a lot of people know. They just push through it. They do. I think a lot of But there's small things, too. Like, I notice when I do an overhead press that my left wrist breaks just a little more than my right, and it's yeah. barely fucking noticeable. Well, that's why it's also important to do unilateral training. So, yeah. so you know, if you if you take it and you, you concentrate on why my right side responds so much more than my left shoulder, right, um, that's, that's what you have to take away from that when you go back to barbells and you're like, okay, you know, this is something I should probably lower the weight like you guys are saying. Uh, so that way it's con- like it's a weight that my left side that's lagging can control properly. Well, my I know my right arm is going to kill this, but yeah. we need to train together. So right. the Logan Doherty, how do you see virtual reality tech and artificial intelligence impacting the fitness industry and mind pump oh wow That's yeah. a, just well loves that i think shit. i love this kind of stuff i think impacting the fitness industry and mind pump are almost the same thing right because we're yeah. part of the fitness industry yeah. and it's gonna no matter well, what we've moved in the digital space i mean don't kid yourself like we we see a lot of opportunity utilizing tech and and the way that we can reach more people, I think that's been the biggest explosion mm-hmm. that's positive, right? So it, it's been able to give people a way louder voice and connect you to way uh, more people. So that way, there is a way now for people that really know their stuff and are sending the right message for the like more to get more exposure if mm-hmm. if they tap into it correctly. And so uh, as, as far as like VR and I mean, that, that's kind of an interesting thing in AI. Obviously, to me, those sound so far away, but, I mean, they're already making massive improvements on them. Dude, well, 10, 15 years from well, now. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about it. This leads into to, uh, our secret sauce, I feel like. Something that's kind of like our secret sauce, I feel like, and uh, a big part of Mind Pump success and growth is the fact that we were trainers for as long as we were. We really understand, like, the things that the, the big rocks – Mm -hmm. that help people and we've tried our best to implement that in this new digital world and i don't think a lot of people have spent at least in our arena have spent a lot of time focusing on those things so like for example we know that there is a personal element that comes to training and fitness that is very very unique to it in comparison to any other business model uh, you don't purchase it and you don't get to go home and look at it and play with it and drive it and show it off to your friends. It's an emotion. It's a feeling. It's a, a level of awareness. It's something that it's not tangible. So the the need to have a, a personal connection with your people or your client is unique in this industry. Mm-hmm. So my thing with the whole virtual reality is, and I don't know because I don't know what it will look like in 15 years, You know, because when it first comes out, uh, there'll probably be a lot of pushback and they'll probably modify it. But we're that's still and I you're right, I Justin. I think it's to to replace us, I still think it's No, I think I think initially what we're gonna see is that VR tech and AI is going to bolster and strengthen yes. and grow the fitness industry. Yes, you'll be able to yeah. use it as a tool. Big yeah. time. I, I could see AI replacing a personal trainer when AI is, uh, when it's indistinguishable from a human. When it's physical. Yeah, when, when it's indistinguishable from a human, yeah. then yeah, you'll have robot personal trainers. But until then, because the psychological component is 99% of that's it, personal though. training but that, success. But that's the, the difference, you know, because that's the secret you, sauce. you can yeah. write it as much, you know, code and algorithm as you want, like leading up to this. So AI, obviously, it's, it's taking on its own intelligence, so it's going to think differently. Um, so it'd be interesting. Like, who knows? Like, AI itself is so unpredictable, you know? Like, who who really knows what that looks like? It, it's such a thing that it's like, I, people talk about well, it with certainties, but to me, it's just it, like... It, I, I think it's going to be a lot different than we even think it is. Well, it's fun to speculate, right? Yeah. It's fun to speculate and try and figure out. I, I really like what you said, Sal, as I see that, I see it as a tool. I see it as uh, it complementing what we're doing. Like, I would love to have some ridiculously smart AI as an assistant to us who, like, we could totally program or create, like, all the the frequently asked questions, right? That we can mm-hmm. just boom, 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 help so many more people that way on the real easy stuff. And then maybe more the di- digging deeper and diving more into the psychological side, which requires a person and this this uh, ability to... And the creative uh, thought process. I yes. Think, yeah, that, I think that's the biggest distinguishing factor because you can, you can like pay attention to patterns all day long, but that only tells you so much. Like 
there's a creative element to humans that's, well, that's unique. I think in order to create real artificial intelligence, we have to understand how the brain works and the mind works. And, mm-hmm. we're, and we're, we don't. We're not even we don't, close. Yeah, that's we don't why I there. feel like this is so yeah. far. But, but I, I'll say that. Here's what I think. Well, I think, and we know, too, with the whole gut influencing yeah. that. I mean, that yeah. could that could turn. I'm saying. We talk about a <laughs> rabbit hole. The you more, know what I'm saying? so like, many things. Yeah. No, the it, more, it's the, like that law. Like uh, um, uh, Rob Wolf was telling us about. Remember that is like the more, you know, uh, you know the the the, real, the more you realize the more you, don't you know. realize <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but it's like it's there's an actual graph for it yeah like Dunbar's I, equation or I think something so like that. Yeah. so so here's what I think with virtual reality in the more immediate future I see when virtual reality is really good to where you can project yourself in someone else's living room as a 3D image yeah. I could see group training and personal training. Well, because you already, yeah, you already see that right now with television yeah. and being able to live stream. Yeah, so, so you can now I can I can join a class virtually in my living room. So I mean, yeah, there's going to be ways that we'll be able to infiltrate that in home market I think, like crazy. I think online coaching will explode. Yeah, like if you let's say you want to train with someone over, in, you know, you're in another part of the country or whatever, they could appear in your living room or in the gym with you show you, you know, uh, techniques and exercises. Um, I could see group training explode like that. Like imagine if there was a super popular group exercise class taught by like this fucking amazing instructor, Mm -hmm. but the classes are packed all the time, but they could project him or her into your living room so you could take the class with everybody. Well, I see, honestly, I see augmented reality like hitting more than VR for this reason alone because you could put on some some glasses or something and, and so now that person is just with you versus now I have to like, like create an entirely new environment and close myself off uh, and then yeah. experience this with this trainer in a virtual world. It's like, can keep me in the real world, but now bring this person, you know, right into my living yeah, room. Yeah, I, can, here, I can see that. Here's, but- some, here's something else I see with, uh, with, the, with tech is I see tech in the very near future uh, being able to quantify s- all these different metrics that are related to uh, your health and your individual responses to things like foods and exercise. So I think you're going to be able oh, yeah. to you know, right away. Sensors are all already of getting very sophisticated. You're going to be able to measure, yeah. uh, you know, inflammatory markers in real time, mm-hmm. uh, hormonal changes real time, your insulin levels real time. You're going to eat something. You're going to see how it affects your body. You know, it blew me away. We met with these with these tech health uh, experts re- relative, re- rather recently, and they were explaining to us how, because they were measuring insulin in real time, mm-hmm. and they were they were telling us how a potato, they were showing these graphs and there was this bell curve Mm -hmm. and most people respond like this with their insulin response in the middle. But then there's these outliers and they were showing us these specific examples. Of course, they were keeping the people anonymous, but they were showing like, this guy eats a potato and here's his insulin response and Mm -hmm. then look at this woman and her insulin. And it's- Completely different. It's like, holy shit, that's totally different. Night and day. Yeah, like like with those kind of individual, and we know this as trainers for years, like you train people, one person's response totally different from the next person. So yeah, that's always going to be outliers. That's where I see the the more immediate future, where you're going to have devices now that can measure all these things no. in your body, yeah. and you'll eat and exercise, and it'll tell you workout was okay. Today's workout intensity well, should be moderate, and to, and this is what you should eat today. And you know you ate this, and you did oh, your inflammatory markers go yeah. up when you eat this. You know these these foods, even though they're supposed to be healthy, uh, but exactly. for you or not. If you want my honest opinion, it's it's exactly that. It, the future of fitness is going to. Definitely steer more into the automated, like the sensor type response. So if I'm picking up a weight, it already knows how much it is, how many times you moved it. Like it's doing all the analytics yeah. of every part of your movement, your heart rate, you know, how you're responding, like how your breathing patterns are. Like you're going to have like just so much fucking biofeedback is going to be uh, well, absurd. Well, and I think this is an area that we all strongly agree and when we first started Mind Pump, we agreed that this the fitness industry is is grossly behind. Uh, I mean, they are way behind yeah. in this arena. And in the future, these all say the, the the people that are going to win this race are the ones that are on all that cutting edge, are taking that aren't denying it, pushing back from it, that are embracing it, learning how to use it, and to blend it within their style, their way of training, their. Mm-hmm. 
If you are doing that, you're going to be so far. And eventually, those people are going to gobble up everybody else. You yeah. could be the best trainer, the best like PT in, in the well, country, it's just, it's but, just the more, it's the gonna, the but what's going to happen? And I'm and this I got a lot of this from Tom Billy. It was really good insight when we started getting into our like off air. We got into our personal business, and I just love having the opportunity to pick guys' brains at, at that level. And you know, he really sees it as. The future is anything that could be free will be free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, so if you have the ability to share your knowledge, give all this stuff virtually online without you sucking your time. I mean, look at the amount of good information people can have from us now for nothing. Or anybody. I'm yeah. just going on the for, internet. Yeah, well, exactly. About Any, that. Yeah. And, and so it's going to be who can give the most free information the best. And those people will gather the most amount of people, and then the real money in the business will come off of all the other things, yeah, not that influence. Dirt. And that is very hard for people to fucking swallow right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell well, you right now- Why would you want to give something away for free that you used to make money on before? Well, I tell you, you, have you to. bottom line is you're going to have to. Yeah, so if yeah. you plan to be in the fitness industry and you want to do this for a long, long time- you need to be in that transitioning into that digital media direction and doing it now if you want to if you don't want to get gobbled you up. Know how, you, you, you know what really excites me about tech? The most exciting thing for me now that's I think is either available now or will be available very soon. There's a device that actually will scan food. And I can't remember how it works. It has to do with, I think it uh, shoots yeah, a spec, uh, some kind of spectrometer. Yeah, it kind. shoots a laser yeah. at it, and then the way that the the, the laser re refracts or whatever, it can tell you mm -hmm. what's in your food. Yeah, so mineral I'll, content, all that. I'll scan yeah. a food. It'll tell me vitamins, minerals, fat, protein, carbs. It'll tell me pesticides. You know that's going to be in your phone before you know it. Oh, it'll be like pesticides, herbicides, toxins. Like, can you can you just let's just take let's reflect for a second, like. Yeah. Labels can suck my dick. They're yeah. gone. Yeah, Food, like, yeah exactly. FDA, Food nobody's companies, gonna, nobody's going to care. Nobody's yeah. going to care about the FDA. Nobody's going to care about any of that shit. You won't need it because you'll be able to look yourself. In fact- You won't need, you won't need dude, some certified person no, policing, nothing. governing something can you, because you can govern it yourself by the click of a uh -oh. button on your phone. You, you want to talk about a disrupting technology. Fucking A. Yeah. Imagine this. Well, that Imagine being said, this, how hard is it going to get to get passed and get pushed through? Oh, it's that's you. It's, it, there's, no, there's nothing. There's you no regulations against it. You can't. That's the that's beautiful thing about tech is it advances faster than bureaucrats can, can yeah. legislate but here's what i love that i think is beautiful get them think about this we had to get you to got, that you, point that we, we weren't there 10 years ago no now it's there yeah that's how uber exists right yeah but like think about it like there's an old lady and she makes the best mexican food well now she can fucking cook it and not worry about having to be regulated because you can go over there and you can scan it yourself and see oh it's clean healthy and i can eat. yeah like all those scare tactics gone yeah, like I'm, I'm excited about that. that. Is gone. And yeah. and for me, and, and it opens up our opportunity too. So you don't have to like go through all this whole process to open up a restaurant. Dude. Like you just have people over that want to eat your food. Think and, and think about supplement. It's probably well, going to be way think better. About supplement companies are fucked because you're going to scan the protein. And be like, uh, your label is wrong. Yeah, you have all the <laughs> shit in it. Yeah. This is but, all soy, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't yeah, wait. They're yeah. shaking in their boots. Oh, good. Shake, Sarah Bixo. What is your thoughts on training with adrenal fatigue? This is a this is coming up for me more and more and more because I've opened myself up to, to online yeah some online yeah, coaching. Of course, and we definitely and I'm yeah. I'm getting a lot of I got these an onslaught of that. One oh man, I'm getting a lot of these people who uh, who used to compete in bikini or bodybuilding or physique or whatever. Mm. And they're in this category. And How similar is this to metabolic damage? It's the, I think it's, it's the same. Kind of the same. Thing. I think well, it's, it's, the it's similar it's, or it's the, it's the name. The same. It's the name they're giving it right now, like okay. because right now, and that's what yeah. Because I've heard both of them. We have to preface with very much like the same. We have to preface with that also is yeah. that it's not. It's by the medical community. You know, uh, it's metabolic, not recognized. Yeah, metabolic damage or um, no, it's not recognized yet. But this, I mean, it, it will be. Yeah. I'll, I'll bet my house on it. I, I tell you, so adrenal fatigue. Uh, you know, these are symptoms of. Like fatigue, low energy, you know, low energy, low motivation, maybe depression, issues with sleep, you know, cold, hot sweats. Like, this is your burnt out uh, body, okay? And it happens from there's many, many causes, but, but a lot of it resides in over application of stress, not getting enough sleep, and poor nutrition. Mm. This goes also hand in hand with uh, with uh, what's the word? Uh, leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome and adrenal fatigue tend to go hand in hand and hmm. rarely will you find one without the other. Leaky gut syndrome is when your gut is inflamed and it becomes permeable, more permeable than it normally is. 
And so the foods that you normally eat leak through the gut wall and get into your bloodstream. And then your body sees these things that are leaking through as foreign invaders and they create uh, uh, antibodies to them. And some foods are more prone to being, uh, you know, recognized as toxic as, as invaders and other foods. Gluten is definitely one of them. And I have yet, okay, and I'm not saying this is true for everybody, but I have yet to find, to have somebody who I think has real adrenal fatigue who didn't benefit from eliminating gluten. Hmm. Uh, eliminating gluten for people who are truly in adrenal fatigue, so far for me, seems to be a home run every single time. Seems to be like, oh, wow, this was a big, a big change. Interesting. Uh, as far as training on adrenal fatigue, you are trying to balance your body out and optimize your body. So think about think of your training in that sense. So I'm training a client right now who I think has adrenal fatigue, and she's asking me, what should I do on my day off today? Like, I want to do cardio. I want to do hit cardio. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, guess again. And she's like, well, uh, I want to go on a, on a long hike. No, guess again. Uh, go, yo- go to the spa. She's like, yeah. yoga. yoga. And I'm like, depends. What kind of yoga? And she's yeah. like, uh, power yoga. She's like, there's yeah, there's hot yoga, there's power yoga, and then there's candlelight yin yoga. I'm like, that's the one. There it is. You should do today. And then she's like, or I can get a massage. I said that's another good option. Yep. Uh, so, for adrenal fatigue, you're trying to balance your body out. So I would say with your training, traditional strength training, few days a week, maybe two days a week max, uh, maybe three days a week, but probably two days a week. Um, no cardio. You just just look at your neat. Um, focus, you know, meditation, sleep, eat, in, in, increase your, your fat intake, reduce your carb intake, reduce your sugar intake. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Reduce your processed food intake, no artificial sweeteners, like heal your gut, take probiotics, uh, cause they're strongly connected. Those are my, like kind of my, my surface. Now you know, I'm going to take the, the, I'm going to play devil's advocate in this situation because, because this is something that is now, uh, getting popular in the, the fitness community and more, uh, smart people are talking about it, sharing it. Now I, I also already see the the pendulum swinging on this where people I, turn it into an identity. Yes, a lot of people want to go. Oh my God, this is why I'm yeah. not losing weight. Yeah, it's like a I symptom have, they've been waiting for. Yeah, exactly. I've been yeah. waiting for someone to tell me why because I know I know that I am I'm not eating that much and I'm working hard and I should be losing way more weight. And so I just want to tell everybody this real quick that it's way more rare than you think it is. Okay. It's actually, it's it, someone who truly has metabolic damage is, is less common than you think. And most people are just really stressing the body out. And it just takes, just, me, yeah, I just balance it out. I just got to sure. balance some things out a little bit on them and get them a little more aware of what's going on. And they tend to like, turn around pretty That's quick. That's a good point because real adrenal fatigue takes some serious takes, time. It takes some time to get out of. Yeah. You're, you're looking at months and you know months. Some people I know who've done it for, you know, worked on it and after about a year. Exactly. Most of the ones that it. I have truly worked with that actually have it, it's been all, all, none of them have been under six months to a year. All of them have been yeah. year plus of like me helping them and really seeing little to no results because it's a long haul to get there because to get that much damage done to your metabolism, you've had to have fucked it up pretty bad. For a long time. Most yeah. people though are just, because all those things that Sal was talking about that uh, you know people are doing, those are all stressors. Even working out is a stressor, mm-hmm. right? So th- most people are just stressing the fuck out yeah, of their I body. Yeah, ca- I definitely caution in the intensity, even if you are yeah. lifting weights. Yeah. I just I just preface that. Yeah. That's, and that, to me, like normally that's all. I just got to go like, oh, fuck. Well, you're hammering yourself here. You're hammering yourself at work. You're hammering yourself here. Let's actually just fucking, let's do a couple things that actually help that or complement that instead of adding more to it and normally when they go to a trainer they're desperate and they've already they've already tried so much stuff and they're trying everything right now and now they're looking for you to give them even more stuff to do and they're willing to pay for it and it's like actually we're going to cut out a lot of this stuff and we're just going to take one or two little things that I want you to hone in on and connect to and figure out mm-hmm. how that affects the way you feel, the way you move, your energy, your strength, all that stuff. And you start connecting the dots with them. And normally that only takes me about 30 to 90 days. That's why I have a, a for me, it was when I was doing online coaching, it was a three month minimum. You had to be with me because I wanted, I knew that 
you know, within those 90 days, I was going to have, I was going to be able to connect enough dots that you would get it, you know, or get the idea of what you needed to do for the long-term results. But I knew also that I needed more than 30 days because majority of people, it takes a little while for you to start to connect that and figure that out. Yeah. Oh, here's something you should not do. If you have a real adrenal fatigue, you should not fast. I actually had people who I think have adrenal fatigue. And they're like, "Oh, I, you know, I'm going to start fasting because I know that's yeah, a good another idea. stressor. Like, no, right? no, no, it's no, more no, no. stress. Well, your body just, yeah, you just can't handle it. Can't yeah. handle anything that's not uh, that's that's going to be any type of a stressor. Or you're fighting, yeah, you, you know, for to survive. Yeah, you know, no, like, come on, yeah, no. exercise, food, all these things, you know, fasting, like those are all. Cook, uh, here's here's another one: vegetables, lots of vegetables, cooked vegetables. You, you want to eat cooked vegetables? Why? If you have inflam, if you do have leaky gut syndrome, lots mm. of raw vegetables can actually irritate your gut more. Believe it or not, so cooked vegetables are easier to digest. The cooking process actually breaks down the fiber quite a bit, and you can eat more of them. So uh, that's another one. I had this conversation with someone the other day, and oh, I eat lots of vegetables. I don't know. I have all this bloating and pain. I'm like, wait a minute. Do you cook these vegetables? No. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> cook those and then see what happens. And sure enough, solve the problem. Yeah, right. Xavier An Five. How did you come up with the name Mind Pump, and what other names have you? Did you come up with before? You know what, I, Doug? Do you remember who or how we came up with Mind Pump? I don't. Actually. You don't remember? I'm I was a collaborative sh- effort. Yeah, yeah, because not one person stands well, out. Craig, no. you know, he had, he had some like post going on within his people, and so did we. I remember and we. Then we it was we one of the options. Throwing, yeah, we were throwing names around all together. And uh, yeah, that's what I remember from it. I well, don't even remember. I do remember. I do remember. Um, and I remember Sal. I do remember Sal saying this, where he's just like, you know, I foresee us doing so much more than just fitness for people. I don't want. Right. We don't want a glass ceiling. Yeah. And then I remember me coming back and countering, being like, well, listen, we need to stay in our lane. Like we're fitness people. We need to like it needs to be something related to fitness because that's our expertise. We don't want to be also trying to act like we're experts in something that we're not. Yeah. And we all agreed, right? We both agreed on yeah. both. Like both were important. Like we had to, it had to have some sort of attachment to health, wellness, and fitness. But then we also didn't want to, we didn't want to be pigeonholed, pigeonholed ourselves yeah. to something just related to fitness because we want to help in so many other areas right yeah i could because you know if you if we had I voted a, for shreds but i was already taken <laughs> it was already taken so yeah. was like, oh, shit. if if we if it was a strictly fitness name it would limit our uh our content um and you know i i don't know when i met with you guys and we first sat down i i immediately right we had this chemistry right away we're fucking flying like we don't shut up we have really really good conversations and I, I, you know, I thought to myself. I said, "Well, I said, we're we. There's a lot of personality here. Like we're we're more personality than anything. And I, we are, you know, we do we are quite knowledgeable about fitness and health. But there's people out there that are smarter than us in fitness and health. Yeah. And uh, you know, I we weren't. We also knew we weren't going to go, you know, the, the the super you know academic route because we get our asses handed to us. We, but I did know that we also talked about, hey, we would like to get those people on our show. Right. But we also like all these other things, like all these other subjects we like to talk about. And it just fitness happens to be our favorite hobby. So, you know, that's why the word mind is in there because we wanted it to be, we wanted that that to be open enough, you know, to be able to and do And let's that. be honest, when we actually did it, we weren't like, oh, this is perfect. Like we kind of settled yeah. on it. And I remember when Doug even for, uh, created the first logo, we weren't even like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Justin, I remember we wanted something more creative that was more brandable for shirts and things like that. And, yeah. like, and we were all going back and forth like, oh, I don't like the color yellow and all this stuff. But, you know, it's kind of crazy how it worked out because – you know, the fact that, you know, it ended up being just the podcast, Mind Pump Media is the parent company to Mind Pump Raw Fitness Truth. Yeah. Uh, it really worked out. So it stands out great for podcasting. So when you're going down and you're scrolling on the podcast, you see Mind Pump in big, bold, yellow and white letters. So it stands out really well. It doesn't pigeonhole us to just fitness. We don't have a barbell and weights all over it or like a guy flexing or a girl flexing on there. Yeah. So it was... It's I not think, the keto show or the paleo, you yeah, know, radio hour. Yeah, it really, <laughs> yeah. it really, it really grew on all of us, right? I feel like you know we, but we did 
go back and forth. I mean, we debated back and forth, and I, I don't think anybody was like overly excited about it. I think we all kind of like, okay, that does work. That mm-hmm. works. That works. It covers everybody's. It, it grew on us, yeah. it, but now it's like, now obviously hindsight, like, oh, it's perfect. It was a perfect name, but yeah, at the time, I think it's we're more all, that uh, idiot servant thing. Servant. <laughs> servant. So, <laughs> it's, it's, it'll serve you, sir. You do a thing. Yeah, you have a thing with uh, mispronouncing. I, I do, you know, I, I'm, but you know, you, you just want to see if people are listening. Well, here's to the you. thing I that, noticed I about, that's a trick. here's the thing I noticed about Adam, which is just uh, blows me away. You have the ability to pick up uh vernacular very quickly. Like if I say a word that you've never heard before, mm. I'll hear you the following week, use that same word in exactly the way it's supposed to be used. I got to give you props. You, you mentioned lambasted. Yeah. And yeah. I, I was like, God damn, I haven't heard that word. <laughs> like. <laughs> Ever. Hey, kids. Like, <laughs> lambasted. Yeah. Use it, everybody. Yeah, it's I fun. I don't even know what it's I, fun. I used, know, it, I used it last I, but night. You, but you do. You use words, I think, that you read or you hear once. You understand how it's used. And then you say it and, and then you use it in sentences and in paragraphs and use them appropriately or properly. I just think you, you heard it once or you mm. read it once. I know I mispronounce words I read all the time. Well, I, I, think, never, that's, I think that's the part of of learning and that's part or at least that's part of my learning process is I have to read something I have to see it and then I have to say it mm-hmm. like I need to do all three of those things for it to and, and I need to do it soon because if I if I if I just took something yeah, that's in, it you just apply it really quickly yeah so you yeah know, I'm not afraid to yeah you're not afraid I'm, to most people will, will reserve that you know and so they're basically filtering themselves yeah you know yeah I, that's I, all that is like I, you're still learning the the actual pronunciation 100%, who cares 100 yeah. percent. I'd rather I'd rather say it and it come out not the way I should. It should have came out, mm-hmm. but that that's how I learn, right? So that's yeah. how to well, me. And you know, that fear of I think that holds a lot of people back because they're so afraid. Totally. I'm not going to say this right, or it's going to sound. Oh, they're worried or, about the backlash. Or they're or, they're questioning. Ooh, their, I might be wrong for yeah, once. Everybody's so afraid of being wrong. Do you pronounce it this? I have the zero fucks. Like I'm going to say yeah. it because I know it fits somewhere there, right? <laughs> I'm going to keep going, and then I'm sure then co- I'm sure somebody will make fun of me later. You know, it's and interesting. That like, only happened a handful of times. <laughs> I noticed that because like even like so this brings up like kind of a, a conversation like one of our old videos for or, on in, on uh, Indian clubs like so I learned Indian clubs from one of my buddies that's a trainer and another buddy of mine that was a trainer that like went to these different conferences and all this kind of stuff and so I was taught a specific way and I realized that like me then now taking this I didn't fact check them you know I yeah. didn't fact check them on it and like so I, I wasn't like super versed or proficient and I'm not like like professing that I'm like super proficient in Indian clubs or kettlebells or anything like that. But I do know enough, you know, to, to sort of relate, to help others. Relate, yeah. Relay you the know, information. You know enough to know that you know the more than the majority and you sharing that and is I more share, par- I'm powerful not afraid, and helpful. And here's the thing. Like, so I was wrong on, on, on a certain part of, of the grips in, in, in the way that I didn't twist my body back and, um, you know, get some transverse planar movement with to attach to that. And I, I was like thinking about like, oh, that's a good point. You know, like, uh, you know, like I, I do it this way because I can, that's not necessarily the right, you know, thing. Like you, you want to teach it the way that you want everybody to do it. Right. So, but anyway, so I just, I just checked myself before getting angry. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I'll do my research. I'll see, you know, critically examine this and look, you know, and sure enough, you know, I was wrong. So that being said, like for my response to it is like, okay, cool. Like I learned something. Yeah. I, well, ju- I just learned something. And, and guess what? Like I, like I, that's, that's like one of the first times where somebody had checked. Cause I got an ego, you know, when somebody comes at me and so I'll be more reserved with it and be like, oh no, I'm going to be wrong. Yeah. But I just recently noticed that that dude, whole you, state has changed for me. You went, yeah, dude. I was really impressed because it was actually a YouTube channel, and somebody commented, mm-hmm. and they said you were doing something wrong. And normally, you know, your your response would be to fucking fire back. It's our channel, right? We got mm-hmm. the power. We'll say, but no, Justin went and did his research. The guy was right. Invited the guy to come down. He's probably going to come down and uh, show us. Some I hope sh- he does. You and know, show like, us some shit. I want to learn from him. Like how fucking how awesome is that? Number one. Yeah. For 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 Justin to do that, and how awesome is that? That now you're able to you're, you know you you learn that process and you just grow from it. But you know, Adam, back to your your you know when you when you mispronounce words or whatever. Would I know I know what I would consider you, but I want to hear from your mouth. Do you consider yourself a communicator? Would you say that that's one of the things you love doing the most? Yeah, I like to communicate. Yeah, yeah I think so. Like a true communicator, you uh, you you value and you love words. You love words. You love new words. And I'm same way. I love words because 
different words can that mean the same thing can also mean a little bit different so you can be more specific absolutely and more descriptive with the new word and words are fucking they're fun and awesome you know i used to actually write down my girlfriend did the same thing i actually used to write down my words that i would listen here and be like oh i like that word and i I'd, I'd write it down because i just liked the way it looked and the way it sounded and i think people who like to communicate tend to do that and we probably you know i do the same thing i think we probably have a higher propensity to mispronounce words because we're saying it for the first time because we heard it for the first time and if people don't correct us we just keep saying it that way <laughs> until somebody says something yeah and, well and I, that's I, I think too when you're i personally love it so. well we're, we're also you just go to go to the library yeah, and read no, it yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude it gives people character though like well, otherwise everybody sounds so robotic that has held back for years and then now they're they're regurging, regurgitating everything out the proper way. Well, you yeah. also got to remember too that oh, you're so proper. Especially when you're talking about Sal and I is because Justin you has the most formal education. I'm self-taught for the most part. Yeah. I mean now now that I'm I'm 35 years old, I've I've spent more time of my life teaching myself than I ever have from a teacher, a mentor, anybody else. And so part of it, you get a, you get a little bit of a which I don't mind sharing because we are the raw truth. Of, you know, and that's some, one of the things I think that's mind pumped in true fashion here is like, that's part of my learning process. Right. And I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid to embrace it and own it. Like I'm going to, I'm going to get it out there because I know that that happens to me two or three times because I'm using it and I'm applying it because I just learned it two or three days before I know that, but, but in, in due time, it's going to flow like everything else does. And then I'll be that much better of a communicator. Yeah. Now you just get to, now people get to see that process because we're not refined because we didn't go, I didn't have uh eight, 12 plus years of formal education where I was taking tests on it, learning over, over, over memorizing it and then come out. And then I'm like, okay, I'm only going to present you what I know. Well, no, that's how I'm going to go. I'm going to fucking present you everything that I know. And then as I learn it, I'm going to present it to you right away because one, I feel like a lot of people can benefit. Mm -hmm. And then two, that's how I learned. I actually had a client give me a, it's like one of the greatest compliments ever. It was a, a surgeon that I, I trained. I used to train some really, really smart people. And I loved it because while I was training them, I was just learning the whole time. So I felt like I was actually getting more out of the train they, than they were from my perspective. But anyhow, I don't remember what word it was, but I, I was talking about something and I said a word and he kind of looked at me and smirked and we ended up becoming good friends. He smirked a little bit and he goes, you like to read a lot, don't you? And I'm like, huh? I'm like, well, why do you say that? And he goes, the way you pronounce that word. He goes, that's not how most people pronounce it. I can tell you've never heard it before, that you've only read it. What a nice way to compliment you, right? And instead I was of like, whoa, instead man. Of instead of insulting you because he's insecure about yeah. how intelligent he is to try and make you feel like most, what most Somebody people do. Somebody healthy ego. Yes. Yeah. Most people right there. Could, what, and you, that's why that guy became a friend of yours for sure. Well, because not, I know I know who your personality and when you meet somebody that has that kind of level of awareness where he easily could have done what most insecure motherfuckers that are that smart do. Oh, which it was is, an opportunity to hammer you. Yes, an make opportunity smart. to make you look less smart or him more smart by pointing that out. Instead, he actually complimented you on fucking up, which is how I like to respond to a lot <laughs> of people. You've seen me do this before. If you go back to, like, if you go deep enough, if you've been following me long enough on my Instagram, there was quite a few people that were, like, beat me up over, like, misspelled words on my Instagram, uh, yeah. right, that were that I would just rip out something. I'd just say it, say it I felt, and I just fucking laid into the grammar Nazis because I'm like, I don't spend, like, this, like, a college paper. I'm giving you what I know. I'm going to fuck it up all the time. Like, I don't I don't really sweat it, you know what I'm saying? So I, I feel like when you meet, the, that shows a lot of insecurities on the people that find the need to point it out. There's a way to deliver that. That's how you deliver information like that. Yeah. Well, there's a pretentiousness that exists when you get into academia that's real and it's people that they they start to divide the 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 sales people quote unquote with oh, the dude. the people that are mm -hmm. of academic knowledge you know there's been <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah you know, i did all of my i paid mo good money to get all this academic work and you know fuck these guys are making more money than me dude, i'm the one you, withholding the knowledge you don't know i don't think you realize how how hard you hit the nail on the head oh, yeah, number I, obviously a lot of people learn and, and, and get formal education because they love to learn. But there's some people that like to learn because it makes them feel superior. Absolutely. But what you're, what you're talking about right now is a long-lasting tradition. You know that academia, uh, people at the highest uh, you know, education levels for, for long, like thousands of years, hated the merchants. You guys know this, right? Like the people who were in the churches, the nobles, the ones who read the books, the whatever – 
they disliked the merchants so much. The ones that were out there like doing the trades, making mm. the money, mm -hmm. they hated them so much because they felt that they were so smart that they could organize society better if they could just can control people more than the market would with all these merchants. Reality, we know the opposite. We know nobody's... There's not a lot of people understand that, right? No, there. That's no. some good yeah. economics right yeah. there to and that drop was, on some people. And that was, that's was that been around for a very, very long time. And this is this is where the distrust in uh, that originated in banks and merchants for a long time. And if you go and look through history, you see that's caused a lot of people problems. There's a lot of freedoms. So, uh, Milton Friedman, right? Milton Friedman talks about this. And if you look through, uh, you actually read some of the historical things, you'll see like the church... Uh, at the time, you know, for for a long time, the church was the the holder of information, and they were considered the scholars and the academics. And, and the church did, in fact, uh, for a long time, were, were the ones that were studying and learning the most stuff. And then there was a split, of course. But you had the nobles and the church and whatever, and they did not like these these quote unquote you know uh, unintelligent people who were building these things and trading and you know uh, you know making this this creating this wealth and all this stuff and and through this wealth having more influence over society because they felt that they could organize society better because they had better ideas even though in practice they never did anything good stuff <laughs> check this out 30 days of coaching 30 available for free still mindpumpmedia.com all you got to do is go to mindpumpmedia.com opt in you're going to get an email every single day with a topic, whether it's wellness, meditation, uh, mobility training, proteins, fats, carbs, whatever. You're going to learn in depth about those subjects. We're going to give you some hard-hitting facts, some cool stuff, and we're going to back it up with studies uh, that we are going to provide for you. It's for free, mindpumpmedia.com. Also, if you like to ask questions and you like your questions answered, the best place to do it is at Mind Pump Radio on Instagram. These are the questions we pull from when we do these Q&A episodes. So go there, check periodically. If we post up a, a Qua meme or whatever, you just ask your question underneath it. Uh, make sure you hashtag Qua. And uh, if we like your question, we'll pick it and we'll answer it for you. Uh, lastly, we all have private Instagram pages and uh, we all give out great information and sometimes we give out promotions. My personal page is at Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. And Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.